Troops, I saw a bear here, and welcome to update 49 for Foxhole. This isn't the big 1.0 yet, this is more of a balance patch leading up to it. But regardless, we've got some new tools to work with, and some new balances that'll change up combat on the battlefield. First up, localization has returned, but remains a work in progress. The following languages have been added. Chinese, French, German, Portuguese, and Russian. The devs would like to remind people that if you want to get involved with the localization process and help improve the quality of the translations, please see their post. There is a link in the patch notes down below. There's been performance improvements for bunkers, squad GUI, and the weather to hopefully make your game less laggy. And vehicle physics have been improved. Rear wheel drive and tracked motorized vehicles will now see more realistic behavior when traversing uneven terrain. If you'd like to test this out yourself, definitely try driving some LUVs over the craters in the pits on Deadlands. Abrupt lag spikes at bridges should no longer throw your truck into the ocean. But, you know, we'll wait and see on that one. Though note that destroyed trenches and bunkers will slow down tanks and other vehicles somewhat as they cross over them. Speaking of tanks, we've got two new heavy hitters. The Colonials get the 86K-C Ranceur. This is an assault tank. It's based off the Bardiche chassis, but it's fitted with quad-mounted RPG launchers, and a high-velocity 12.7mm cannon, giving it the lovable nickname, the Quadish. It's meant as a structure-killing vehicle, and it excels at that role. Meanwhile, the Wardens receive the Gallagher Highwayman Mark III. It's a cruiser tank based off the same chassis as the Outlaw. It's fitted with an independently rotating MG turret, but its main armament is a set of twin anti-tank cannons. It's great for disabling subsystems and tanks, though actually destroying them will require it to be combined with other Warden tanks at the front. However, lightly armored vehicles won't stand a chance against this twin barrel cruiser tank. Moving on to some gameplay changes, sandbag walls at Tier 1 and fire pit build sites are now destructible when rammed so you can't trap vehicles with them anymore. Keeps and outpost interiors are now warm environments during snowstorms. Surprised that wasn't a thing before, but here we are. This is a big one for builders. Trench and bunker build sites can now be demolished by the original builder. Hammer-built build sites can also now be demolished by the original builder. And for both of these cases, demolition can be performed by the original builder without completing the structure or reserving it first. Bunker garrison defenses will now leave a bunker husk of equivalent tier when destroyed. Bunker ramps no longer reduce the repair cost of bunkers. Players can now vault out of craters that are being filled with a shovel. No getting trapped in them anymore. Packaging and unpackaging can now be cancelled with player movement, just like assembly of items at bunker bases can. Passive squad members can now lock and unlock squad claimed vehicles, and they can also now contribute to the required number of players to reserve a storm cannon, intelligence center, or ammo room. Just a quick clarification on that, this refers to the multi-squad system. Your active squad is the squad that you're currently in, the one you can hear the voice chat for. Your passive squads are the squads that you are a part of but not actively in, therefore you cannot hear their voice chats. So these passive squads, that is what this mechanic is referring to. Contested borders can no longer be prevented indefinitely by deliberately ignoring a faction's last main spawn point. And tripods can now be deployed in barbed wire trenches. Additionally, there were also some map changes as additional environmental set pieces have been added and a few lore pieces have also been scattered around. Some very, very telling ones at that. 
As for the balancing changes, the UV-24 Icarus range has increased to 40 meters, the T8 Gemini range has increased to 35 meters, and its inventory and ammo capacity has increased from 6 to 12. The Balfour Rampart 40mm field gun deals 25% less damage against structures, although its vehicle damage has remained unchanged. All deployed tripod weapons now have 50% more health. Field machine gun ammo capacity has doubled, although this is more due to a bug fix rather than an actual change. The Clancy Raka M4 has had its stability gain rate decrease. The crate size has been reduced down to 3. It can no longer stand and fire without full cover. Its movement speed penalty has been increased, and high velocity has been reduced to 35%. The weapon can also no longer be fired from barges or APCs, so no sniper barges or no sniper APCs. Same thing with the Colonial's Augur. The stability gain rate has decreased, refined material costs increased from 15 to 25, it can no longer be fired from standing without cover, the movement speed penalty has increased, the high velocity has reduced to 25%, and the weapon can no longer be fired from barges or APCs. Personally, I'm not extremely fond of these changes to the sniper rifle. And I made a whole video about discussing other changes that could potentially be introduced to sniper rifles. It's more of a discussion platform, but I'll leave that at a link at the end, in case you want to see what my idea was. The Ignifis 30 time to equip has been reduced by 20%. The 68mm anti-tank cannon has had its reload time increased by 30%. The Booker Storm Rifle has had its max range and max effective range increased, its turning speed has been increased, and its movement speed penalty has been decreased. The Dusk has had its turning speed increased and movement speed penalty decreased. The Katara Model 2 has had its turning speed increased and movement speed penalty decreased. The Alto Storm Rifle likewise has had its turning speed increased and its movement speed penalty decreased. For the Clancy Cinder, its stability gain rate has been decreased and its maximum range has been increased, while its fire rate has also been increased. And the Omen has had its stability gain rate decreased and its maximum range increased. Some last changes include Regional Chat Tab has been added to the chat window. All light tank variants have been reduced in size by about 10%. Visually, this makes more sense, but also it might make them a little bit more useful even in the later stages of a war. With the size reduction, they'll be much more maneuverable within urban environments. S-shaped bunkers are no longer eligible for storm cannon or intelligence center construction. Engineering center information tooltip no longer mentions researching higher research levels. The crane hook rotation controls are now communicated to users operating a deployed crane, and bunker ramps can now be built or upgraded by hammering the open space the structure occupies. There were many bug fixes along with this update, but as per usual, I'll save that for the patch notes down below. Alright, a little bit of an aside. I just wanted to talk about something that'll be upcoming in the future. I am happy to announce that Siege Camp was kind enough to sponsor me for a few videos in the future. I plan to release these videos leading up to the 1.0 update of Foxhole. However, since that's not happened yet and we're still not exactly sure when 1.0 is going to be, those videos will be delayed for a while until we get closer to the 1.0 date. These will be entirely bonus videos. They won't be part of the regular video schedule, and they won't be things like the update videos or just my typical gameplay videos. These will be a separate, dedicated set of videos closer to the release of 1.0. I will have a video also detailing the lead up to 1.0 and what I will be doing. Definitely want to make it a special week. However, I'll save that for a future date once we know more details. I just figured I'd want to put this up front right here for the rest of you. And to be clear, this sponsorship actually had like zero strings attached. In fact, they literally gave me no instructions about the sponsorship. They just said, do whatever. And I decided I want to do some videos. But anyways, little aside, over. And that about does it for this update. Thanks for tuning in. If you like what you saw in this update video, like, share, and subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest Foxhole updates. And as always, good luck, keep your heads down, 
and stay in your foxholes. Bear out.